If you're just stumbling on this video and have no idea who I am, hi, my name is Eden Middleman. I am your favorite dating and sex coach here at Erotic The Brand. This is a topic I've touched on before, but this is something I'm going to go more in depth on exactly how to get over a cheater, how to get over being cheated on, because we've all been there and we all know that it kind of changes who we are if we allow it to. And a lot of us allow it to change us without being aware that we're allowing this to happen. It is quite traumatizing, especially if you've been cheated on and you don't find out for a while, you know, and you've like trusted this person and all of that stuff. You start to look at yourself differently. Being cheated on has nothing to do with you, even though it literally feels like you are the main character of your movie, of your show, of this episode, and you are going through the worst time. You just got cheated on. There's a reason why you got cheated on. You start to make it all about you, but I was this, but I did that, and you start to defend yourself, but maybe I wasn't enough, or maybe if I can just speak to them, or maybe if I could just figure out why, or whatever. All of that is bullshit. And all of that is honestly a waste of your time. And I'm sure most of you guys, if you have not gone through that ringer and put yourself through even more pain by exploring those stupid questions and pondering those stupid ideas and concepts, I mean, you know that it leads nowhere and prevents you from actually healing. The goal here is to heal as fast as we can, as effectively as we can, so that we can move forward and continue to date in a healthy manner and not let that jade us. A lot of us, especially men, I'm so sorry, I've said this before, men are notorious for getting hurt once, okay, years ago, and I always say like in grade six from their first crush, she rejected you or didn't like you or cheated on you or whatever the case may be. And you allowed that moment to define who you are as a person dating. You are now a closed off, cold hearted, like wounded male who hates women because of that one experience. And you allowed that to define you as a man. People think it's so like, it's so strong when you like post and flex on, you know, social media or you're like, fuck men, fuck women. Like I'm so over them. That actually is the weakest thing you could possibly do because you're allowing that specific situation to mold you and it molded you so quickly and so substantially that you are no longer who you once were because for whatever reason, listen to this, for whatever reason, you think that the reason you got cheated on has to do with who you were before you got cheated on or before you knew you were being cheated on. You think it's all about you. It's not. You guys know what I'm all about, radical accountability. And for the first time, I'm not going to say to look at you because cheating, that is when all of my rules of self-accountability really do go out the window. You didn't cheat, so it's not about you. <laughs> it was the other person who cheated, okay? Did you allow it? No, you didn't allow it by being trusting, okay, and letting them go hang out with their friends and letting them go to that bar or whatever. You're not their fucking mother and you are not their owner. You don't have a leash and collar around them unless you're into that. I'm going to stop your train of thought because I know some of, some of you guys are thinking, well, maybe if I stalk them or check their locations more, or maybe if I did this, or maybe if I did that, I would prevent the outcome. I promise you the only thing that you would have done by being neurotic is made them more turned off by you. They would have cheated quicker. They would have cheated in a more sneaky way. You might have not found out. You would have maybe prevented it from happening in that moment, but it was going to happen eventually. I always say, allow them to cheat. You should allow your partner to do as they please because I promise you, that's all that you need to know. I don't listen to words and I always tell you guys, do not listen to anybody's words, watch their actions. If their words align with their actions, you've got a good one. If their words are so far off from their actions, you don't know who the fuck you are with. Okay. So don't talk too much. Don't put rules down. Obviously have boundaries. Don't vocalize rules. See if this person knows maybe I shouldn't, um, cheat or maybe I shouldn't go out with a girl. I used to fucking fuck. Do you know what I mean? Or maybe I shouldn't like go on Instagram and like look at naked girls. Maybe I shouldn't hit on my, my waitress when I'm out with the boys. Like maybe, maybe, right? Like this is a normal fucking person. Trust me. They wanted to cheat. They were going to cheat. It's in their blood. They're going to cheat, period. It doesn't matter what you do. Okay. I want you to think about it this way. If roles were reversed, if you wanted to cheat, 
Even if you say, I would never, I would never. If you wanted to, okay? Let's just pretend. You wanted to cheat. You would find a way, no matter how supervised you were, no matter how annoying your partner was, no matter how often you spent time together, there is always a way to cheat, guys. Whether that is physically, whether that is virtually, whether that is whatever, you will find a fucking way to cheat. So, If you will find a fucking way to cheat and it's possible, no matter how annoying your partner will be, why be annoying and why change who you are after the fact to become this unattractive, gross person because someone else hurt you because of their doing, because of their actions, because of their problems. Their problems have nothing to do with you. Stop allowing people's energy, people's negativity, people's past traumas, people's bullshit actions, people's mistakes. Okay, it's not a mistake, by the way. It's a fucking active decision. Stop allowing their shit to mold you so first tip and how to get over a cheater is understand this concept because it'll make you want to get over them and it'll make you realize me changing because of of what has happened to me in this situation which is oftentimes not for the positive and becoming this cold-hearted hurt person is me not getting over the cheating I never believe people that say I'm over it. Yeah, fuck them, whatever. And they start going around fucking around. They start going out. They start posting stupid shit. They start like doing things for attention. They start acting really hurt and jaded. They start hurting other people because what do hurt people do? Hurt people hurt people. You understand? Only the hurt, right? The people that are still hurt, still wounded, not healed are able to hurt other people. Okay, other innocent people, only fucked up people do that, right? So don't be fucked up. (laughs) In order to get over a cheater, you have to heal. I like to reverse engineer things, and I know that might sound complicated, but I like to be like, okay, I'm not going to become this needy, annoying partner because of what some person did to me. I'm not going to not like how I look or who I am because this person cheated on me with somebody that looks opposite of me when you're super aware of the possibility of this changing you for the worst you actually start to try and create steps to prevent that from happening I like to do things from a proactive preventative place even though you're full force in this journey so if you have been cheated on you have to first understand it's not about you stop making it about you to understand that you're going to start seeing things differently and looking at things differently because you're looking at it through a hurt lens and you don't want to do that because you're not healing if you start to morph into that person, okay? I want you to understand that everyone gets cheated on and as horrible as that is and as gross as it is just saying that and trying to normalize it, which we shouldn't normalize it, it has been because these types of fucking low life disgusting behaviors have been so normalized and They're done in numbers. So just understand that this is not about you. It's not that you are flawed. It's this person that is flawed. And I always like to look at things as a blessing. Not from a religious standpoint, guys. Literally like, thank you. Thank you for showing me who you are. Because I would have continued loving you, pouring an energy into you, and doing all the things that I need to be doing to be a good partner for you, for us. But you were not deserving. But this showed me black and white that you're that you're not deserving. Cheating is one of those things where it's very hard for somebody to get back with that person post because it is just, you can't look at them the same. You lose respect for the person. When you lose respect for the person and they have shown you that they can throw their loyalty in a second out the window, it's hard to build a, a relationship off of nothing because those are the foundations of a relationship. So when you don't have them present, It is so hard to get back with them. So all of this is done so that you move forward and onto somebody who is most likely meant for you. And the person that is meant for you is definitely not this person. I would just say thank you, you know, to the universe, to whatever you believe in. The first thing you need to do to get over a cheater is to block, to delete, to to literally remove them from your existence and your world to the best of your abilities. Don't tell me that you've got excuses. Oh, we're financially binded by this. We have this. We have that. We have kids. We have that. Figure out a way. Sorry. Divorce. Ciao. Bye. Um, If you're not at that stage, break up. It's so fucking easy. Just break the fuck up. Delete them. Okay. Get a restraining order if they're, if they become psychotic, which most of them do. It's so funny. The cheater then becomes this like victim bitch 
baby that comes crawling back. Don't ever take the crawling back as flattery. They think that they can behave this way and then get back with you. That's an insult to you. That should offend you. Yes, it should. You should completely wipe them out of your life. I don't care how long you've been together. It's not psychotic. It's not crazy. All of you guys will, I'm a human being. No, you're just a pussy ass bitch. I'm so sorry. You're just a weak little bitch that wants this person around. Don't lie to me and don't lie to yourself, especially. It's embarrassing when people behave and talk like that. You were hurt by somebody. They disrespected you. Is that what your husband would do? Is that what your girlfriend would do? Is that what your wife would do? Is that what your future wife would do? No, she fucking wouldn't because she would never end up as your fucking wife or as your fucking husband if they did this to you. And if they were able to do this to you and you were in a relationship, what makes you think they can't do worse? What makes you think they won't do it again? Chances are they will do it again. Never think you're the exception to the rule. In order to get over a cheater, guys, you really have to understand that this was a blessing and that this person is not who you thought they were. And that hurts a lot because it makes you question yourself. I get that. But you have to stop that way of thinking. You were a good person. You were trusting. You did everything you could to be a good partner. And even if you were a shit partner, nobody should be cheated on, period. You should break up and then go and fuck somebody. The person who cheats is not decent enough to break up with that person before they go and dabble in whatever it is that they think is more shiny or more interesting for the time being or a distraction or whatever. And the the truth is, guys, you know that people who cheat are insecure. No secure person can cheat. No stable person can cheat because it hurts their character because it's against who they are morally. Their moral compass starts to freak out. They can't do it. They won't do it. They won't put themselves in a position to do that, guys. Don't tell me we're just human. We're not animals, okay? We're fucking human. Yes, we are, okay? So we have a brain that we're supposed to be using we think before we do we're taught this in grade two i just made a song in rhymes like you're fucking welcome besides blocking deleting understanding these concepts guys you need to have self-control this is where again i reverse engineer and i create a list i've spoken about this quote-unquote list i wanted to release my personal list but i'm trying to figure out the best way of doing that you have to envision first of all the best version of you and who you want to become let's say like just the best healthiest happiest person imagine that even if you're not there right now or even close imagine that now create a list of what this person that you want to become would not do or would do okay so like they would not allow you know, someone who cheated on them to come back into their life. That's one of your rules, okay? Your non-negotiable, your law. A lot of you guys need concrete guidelines, okay? Especially when you're in your weakest or when you're confused or when you're overwhelmed. That's where accountability comes in. What are my strengths? Am I very impulsive when I'm emotional? I know, guys, real talk, I know I am. And when I'm emotional, I have trained myself, even if it's on the tip of my tongue to shut the fuck up. I have learned to shut the fuck up. This is part of one of my lists. I do not react in peaks of emotion. I stay as calm as I can be. And if I cannot do that, I remove myself from the room physically. Okay. I have, I have created such a detailed list. It, it's probably insane. If someone were to actually see this whole list, which I was going to release it to you guys, but see this whole list, like I have created and curated this list and polished this list and edited this list as I've grown up. Okay. Like since I was, you know, in my early twenties, like, or since I was even in my teens, I created like a list that I was like, I do not do this because I've learned that if I do this, I'm the idiot. I'm the, the, the shit person or like this never works out for me or and I don't know why I always do that. If you want to know the whys and the, the, the real details behind it, that's what therapy is for. Okay. If you want to really get to the root of the, of the reason why you resort to this over that, over something healthier, go to therapy. The list helps you in the meantime do damage control. You write a list. Okay. The person that I would want to be, she would never accept someone cheating on her. She would immediately block, delete, and then do everything she can the minute she's done with this person to do and be better, heal, and move on. Because we don't want to spend another second on this loser of a person who literally, through their actions, basically said, fuck you. I don't give a fuck about you. So... It only makes sense that you don't care about them. Okay, bye. I'm going to work on not giving a fuck about you anymore and focusing more about me and taking care of myself, which you should be doing no matter what. But 
for the sake of this video and for the sake of your concern of Ooh, I've been cheated on. It hurts. What the fuck am I supposed to do? You create a list and you literally make every day your mission to get closer to that person that you want to become. This is going to sound kind of wild, but you guys know what I mean, especially ladies. We love a good breakup because we have never looked hotter. Okay. We take our anger and all of that. And a lot of the healthier women will put that into, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to start putting in more effort in my appearance. I'm going to get back out there when I'm ready. I'm going to heal. I'm going to close that chapter. I'm going to block. I'm going to delete. I'm not going to stalk him. I'm not going to stalk the girl that he cheated on me with. Like, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to like cry it out with my girlfriends. And then I'm going to take time to myself to really fine tune who I want to be and who I am without this person and move forward and know what I will and will not put up with because chances are throughout this relationship there are probably things that you were also putting up with that you probably shouldn't have that's not to say that that was the reason for the cheating but it's good to just review your past relationships it's good to review once a chapter ends and pull lessons from it so that you can move forward in a more new and improved way, being able to take on new challenges rather than repeat old ones. So this is what a healthy person does. And this is how you should take on these breakups and utilize them as you are going to be the hottest, both mentally and physically and emotionally version of you ever. Okay. And that's just what it comes down to. Whereas a lot of guys, sorry, sorry, again, generalization, not all of you, the vast majority of men, they'll just go and like stick their dick in whatever other hole they can find. Do you know what I mean? Like that's how they move on through distraction. Distraction can only distract them for so long because they're running from the same thing that's that they can't outrun, which is their baggage. You cannot outrun your baggage. So if you don't deal with it and heal with it, I promise you it'll accumulate as time goes on as baggage does and it'll get heavier to carry and then you'll snap. Things move quickly and things move right under your nose when you are not aware and when you don't take the time to heal and when you are not trying to feel all the feels, the good and the bad. It doesn't feel good. You'll, you will feel sick. You will cry. You will fucking get angry. The emotional roller coaster that happens post getting cheated on is probably the most aggressive but I want you to experience it because if you don't experience it and if you numb it with drinking and whatever else you stupid kids do nowadays like I promise you it is going to be the death of you okay it will be the death of who you are your potential the the possibilities you're going to become your own enemy and you're going to stand in the way of all of the good things that could have been for you. So just keep that in mind when you are going through your healing journey. And again, this all this can all apply to other breakups that don't really have anything to do with cheating, potentially just things not working out, people not listening or respecting or loving or caring for each other, you know, people treating each other like they're nothing. I mean, whatever the case may be, this is a great way of just keeping your mind in check and then creating steps daily that will allow you to move forward and move on in a healthy manner by not avoiding, by dealing with your shit head on. I wasn't born like this. I wasn't born with, you know, this thought process. Where did I learn this from, guys? Through my own trials and tribulations. Where did my ruthlessness, my honesty come from? Why do I speak the way that I speak? Because I've been through things, right? And I've learned effective ways of moving on and moving forward so I can be who I am today and be a better version of myself every goddamn day. I was never cheated on in my life. It was my first, you know, first experience being cheated on. And I was like, oh my God, you know, you do sort of have this complex when you see and hear everybody around you getting cheated on, but you've never been cheated on. So you think, Think maybe like oh my god no one could cheat on me like I am the whole package there's like something about that that sits in the back of your mind did I act like a brat like that no but did I somehow feel like I was potentially superior in that department perhaps like that happened like right under my nose and it was happening for a while and when I found out I was so upset at myself first like how could I let this happen how the fuck did I not know intuitively? Like, what? why the fuck would I trust somebody? Why did I think that I was so special that I could not get cheated on? Like, it just, I, I never prepared for it. And here's the thing, you can never prepare for it. Even if you've been cheated on your whole life, you can never prepare for the feeling of just betrayal, pure betrayal and humiliation is what it does to you. And so I immediately 
went into this zone of like survival and I blocked him on everything. I just want you to know that like it is just such loser gross mentality and behavior to be able to cheat. So it should turn you off so much. Like I don't care how hot or how amazing or how in love you are lying to yourself because you think that you're not going to find anyone like that. Period. Don't argue with me. Don't give me another explanation, another reason. You are just adding fluff, okay, to your bullshit. The truth is you are insecure. You think you can't do better. And now this person did the worst thing they could have done to you. And you still are out here thinking, "Uh uh-oh, I'm alone. What am I going to do? You need to figure it out. You need to be alone. That's just the lesson here. You know, for some people, cheating becomes a lesson of like, I need to take care of myself or I need to realize that. I deserve better or thank God I really was somehow convinced that this was my person and this wasn't a few years down the line you meet the love of your life and everything just happens and the stars align like the message of why you were cheated on the reasons and this journey it's not going to be so clear to a lot of us okay when we go through these things we need to trust the process and we need to understand that in order for us to get over it we need to not become whatever this person did to you to others feeding those trust issues by becoming like a neurotic partner to the next person you date like by like wanting to to you know check their phone every five minutes when they've really given you no reason to not trust them the only reasoning you have is from your past experiences which is unhealed trauma that you're pushing onto this person um that's feeding your trust issues because when we're hurting we yearn for something to solve our hurt or to distract us from the hurt and that's what we do or we almost hope and look for somebody to cheat on us again which is fucked it's hard to say that because you're like i would never want that again but why are you looking for it you're constantly looking for are they doing that where are they why are they i've been there trust me i've been there and it is the worst kind of person that you can become because you're not actually allowing yourself to trust Trust is risk. It didn't feel like a risk before because you never experienced somebody abusing your trust to such a degree of betrayal, okay? You really do need to have no contact. There's this whole no contact rule. I don't understand this bullshit, guys. You should have no contact with somebody who does you dirty, period. It doesn't benefit you in any way, shape, or form. It benefits the other person, okay? They keep taking and taking and depleting and hurting you for what? You're allowing it. So now it is your fault. Okay. This first time around wasn't your fault, but the second time around, if you take them back, is your fault. And don't you forget it. So hold yourself accountable when it comes to making the right decision when you found out the truth. How am I going to maneuver and what am I going to do that is going to benefit me? Me. Okay. And that's not revenge and that's not sinking to their level because that's you being hurt and becoming a hurt person. I hope that this helped guide you guys in the right direction. I know that what you're going through is immensely difficult. This is going to be just a fragment of fucking time when you zoom out on a grand scheme of life. And this will teach you skills of moving forward and moving on and becoming a bigger and better person that you're going to need in the future anyways. Push through this feel every emotion and move forward and choose better alternatives. Take the higher road, focus on you, go ghost, be quiet, live your life, do what you need to do, what you want to do. Go to therapy. If it's too hard to handle and if it's too much, that's just a form of self-love is, you know, getting the hard stuff out of the way now and doing the best that you can now so that your future self will thank you. You're meant for so much better. That's why the universe does what it does and works in mysterious ways. This person was not fucking meant for you because if they were they wouldn't have done that don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you're watching it on youtube and subscribe to my youtube channel so much more is coming i promise you guys and i appreciate all the patience don't forget to hit the bell for the notification so you're notified when i do post a brand spanking new episode and if you're listening to the podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts rate it five large and in charge stars. It really helps me out so much. And I see you guys and it means the world to me. Subscribe to the podcast, follow the podcast. I will see you guys back here very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye.